My confirmation to the Holy Folk on why we should have service. I had to work in Maryland yesterday. It was a spot called the Amish Market, and people, man, it's always packed. So I said, maybe if I go by there, I'll be in and out of there. I shouldn't be nobody to be there because everybody's scared. Man, it was jam packed up in there. (laughs) Uh, You couldn't even get what I wanted. Amen. So, but the thing is, is that. Uh, wash your hands, respect people's personal space, amen, we'll be all up on the phone, the stuff, stuff we should be doing already, amen, amen. we pray for those individuals um, who are at home, uh, you know, we pray for them, we go who have been affected by this, we pray for our country, that there's a resolution, but the bottom line is use common sense, use common sense, also, uh, We'll be there here this Saturday. Once again, we reiterate our diaper drop. We're still collecting diapers every week up until the month of May. It's just Saturday will be our big thing. So we'll be here on Holiday Inn. Say we can use their parking. I will have my pickup truck here. Um, so we're going to try to fill up that truck. So we'll get your friends, whoever, um, to come out and help us out. Hey, man, we just asked you to buy diapers and diapers. There's still diapers and diaper wipes on the chair. Hey, <laughs> man. So, uh, Amen. So, uh, diapers and diaper wipes. Also, uh, but God has been so good. He's been so gracious to us that now we're able to uh, download our Bible studies to our YouTube page. So, Mm -hmm. those who are not on Facebook, don't like social media, please let your friends know they can always go to Got to Move. They'll see our logo, see our Bible studies. So, I don't put all our Bible studies on there. So, listen, let them know. They don't have internet. Ain't nothing else I can do. (laughs) (laughs) nothing else I can do so they get on YouTube the goal is to try to post the Bible study within 30 minutes so by 8 o'clock so we have Bible study from 7 to about 7.30 by 8 o'clock that evening it should be posted on YouTube and they or if you missed it on if you missed it on Facebook Live and you don't feel like going through my page and trying to find the old Bible study you go straight to YouTube but we're still in our series uh, called Improving Relationships this Tuesday, I will be talking about improving relationships at the workplace. So I'll be dealing with how we should deal with our bosses, how I deal with our coworkers, because many of us need to improve those relationships. Some of us go to work mad and angry and can't wait to get out of there. Amen. Amen. So we're going to keep that in prayer. We're going we to deal with that. Amen. So but today, 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 this morning, I want to kind of touch on a two-part series called They Really Done a Number on You. They Really Done a Number on You. And before I go to my text, uh, one of the reasons that has inspired this, I was reading uh, this text dealing with another situation, uh, dealing with mental health in another situation, but through some conversations that I had recently over the last couple of months, it kind of inspired me to go back here. And and when and, and what I share with you, I share with you, because myself, I had to go and, 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 and repent and ask God for forgiveness and some judgmental attitudes that I may have had, but and recently we have this thing, uh, this trend that people call church hurt, church hurt. I don't know if anybody got heard of church hurt, and when when you're a pastor and you're not, eva- you're not really evangelizing because you're in a traditional setting or in a traditional church as a pastor, that's not your role or your job to do evangelism, that's the people's job, but when you try to build a ministry, find myself have to go back out and actually do evangelism and, and inviting people uh, to church. But 
I had some very interesting conversations with different people uh, and trying to see different point of views on why certain people don't go to church anymore. And the reality is, is that I've always felt like there's no such thing as church hurt because the church don't hurt people, individuals hurt people. And I felt like, well, you know what, if you're coming to church for Christ, it shouldn't even matter what other people say. But after talking Amen. to individuals who had been in this situation, uh, open up, I kind of changed my perspective on how I look at this thing. And I still struggle with the term church hurt. Don't get me, don't get me wrong. I still struggle with that because according to my text and anybody that know me and my love for the church, I'm talking about the body of Christ, the kingdom of God, not these buildings that sit on corners. I'm talking about the, what Jesus died for. I, I still struggle with that, calling the church hurt. So one of the terms I've come up with in a better term is community fellowship abuse. Community fellowship abuse. Because here's the thing, just because a building is on the corner with church on the marquee and they have pictures of Jesus, does not make it a church. Amen. 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 Just because it has the very church on the marquee and pictures of Jesus in the sanctuary does not make it a church. But the reality is that community fellowship, uh, that fellowship has abused so many people. So many people are hurt. And what I want to relate today, that here at Not the Move of the Move Church, we will not operate ever in a way where we're abusing people. At the end of the day, amen. So what I discovered, what I discovered is that most people do not have a problem with being persecuted for their faith. Let me be clear. Most people do not have a problem with being persecuted for their faith, but people have an issue when they're picked on about their flaws. Amen. 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 There is a difference because the Bible requires us to be persecuted for our faith. That's why we turn the other cheek. That's why we enjoy the suffering. But the Bible never tells us to subject ourselves under abuse because of the flaws that I may have. Amen? Amen. So, And what happens is so many people are hurting and dying. And, and I want to do a two-part series on and how we look at this thing, how we can fix this thing. Uh, but if you can, turn to Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. I want to use this text. And, 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 and I don't really want to identify with the, necessarily with the man, but I want to identify the, tr the treatment of the man by his community. Amen? Mark chapter 5, Mark chapter 5, I'm going to read uh, a couple verses. Come stand with me, stand with me, I'm going to read this. I'm going to read the simple six verses. Then they came to the other side of the sea, of the country of the Darius. And when he had come out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with the unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs, no one could bind him, not even with chains. Because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles broken into pieces, neither could anyone tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains, in the tombs, crying out, cutting himself with stones. And when he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshiped him. You may be seated. The like I said, I want to tag this text two part series uh, on, and I'm going to preach it this Sunday and I'm going to preach it first Sunday in April because I got something else planned for our friends at them to eat. But they really did a number on you. They really did a number on you. Like I said, I met and had a chance to encounter so many different people. And many of the response by inviting them to our church, the response I've been given is that, listen, I don't go to church anymore. I am done with church. I have had people who have visited us and came through us and, and, and try to come visit us on the regular when they can. And their responses was, Pastor, I'm giving the church just one more chance. And many people have been hurt. Many people have been humiliated. Many people have been embarrassed, mistreated by the thing we call the church. Uh, and the reason they say the church is because that's what they identify with. Because a lot of times people identify God and Christ with the local body. And the reality, most of us who are saved and believers, we have an understanding that, that the local body does not always represent who Christ is who supposed to be. And many times people will come to the church for help, they'll come to the fellowship uh, for guidance, 
And when they get there, it's just the opposite of their experience is not where they expected, what they expected. And, and what we have to be careful is, is that, that when we're dealing with people who have been broken and battered, that we must respect their truth. Amen? We must respect their truth. We, we can't be so quick to judge and say, listen, you shouldn't go to church for other people. We can't be so quick to judge them and say, well, everybody in the church ain't messed up. Because the reality is, is what I discovered, is that the few, they say one rotten apple will spoil the whole bunch. Amen? And the reality is that we have too many spiritual terrorists, spiritual bullies who are in the church Amen. left unchecked. Amen. And what happens is when we look in this situation in Mark chapter 5, we, we find a young man who, who, who is possessed by an unclean spirit. He, he, he has demons in him that are called legion. There's many demons. And Jesus <clears throat> uh, has an encounter with this man. But not only Jesus has an encounter, Jesus heals a man of his situation. Uh -huh. But when you read the text and read what's happening, what brought out uh, the attention in this text with me was how he was treated. And, and what I find out is that this man was cut off. He was chained. Amen. And they were trying to control him. Let, let me say that again. He, he was cut off. He was chained. And people were trying to control him. And the reality is that these are three symptoms that keep people from coming to church and running the church because when people come to the house of God with problems, when they come to the house of God expecting people to understand their situation, their sin, their flaws, they do not come expecting to be cut off, chained, and guess what? And controlled. Amen. So when you look at the text, how, how, how was he cut off? The Bible says that that in verse 3, that the media out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit. Then if you go to verse 5, he said, always night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs. In other words, that he was cut off from the fellowship. Amen? We don't know if he could cut himself off or he was cut off by the fellowship. Now, understanding Jewish culture and Jewish history, Anytime someone had an issue, and we're going to talk about this in two weeks about the woman with the issue of love. Anytime somebody had a flaw, or somebody had an issue, they were cut off from the rest of the group. Amen. In other words, that we sometimes the church treat people like they got coronavirus. That because I, I don't want to catch what you got, I don't want you with that rubbing off on my children. So instead of trying to embrace individuals and try to help them through their pain and their suffering, we decide to cut them off. Amen. Look, the text said he was hanging out in the tomb, and, and I started to think why was he hanging out in the tomb? Why was he hanging around with dead people? Because I can imagine that the anguish that was going on inside of him. See, you don't understand when people come to the house of God, you don't know what kind of pain they're struggling with. You don't know what's going on in their life. You don't know what they're, they're dealing with. You don't know how some people are coming into the house just one conversation away from killing themselves. And guess what? They had left and isolated themselves around dead people. They start hanging with people that mean them no good. They start being with people that, that are dead spiritually. And there's a problem with the church when people that have problems would rather hang out in the tomb than hang out in the church. In other words, it's a problem where people rather hang out with dead folk, unsaved people than hang around the people of God. That's a problem. Amen, because the amen. thing is that when we have when I can find more comfort hanging out with the sinners than I can with the saints, then the church has a problem. Amen. amen. He hung out, and the problem of hanging out with dead people, dead people cannot help you, dead people cannot give you life, there's nothing, but the problem is, is that we have to understand and stop cutting people off, because when they leave the church, they're going back to the tomb. He was in the tomb. Secondly, secondly, not only uh, he was cut off, not only he was cut off, he was chained. The, the text says, listen, listen, he was thrown among the tombs and no one could bind him, not even with chains. When you read this text, it is safe to assume that he wasn't chaining himself. It is safe to assume that, that he wasn't trying to bound himself. 
And the problem sometimes with our fellowships and our congregations, and what we have to be careful even here at the Move Church, that when people are coming to be set free, we don't put them in chains. Amen. Amen. Some people cannot get better because we're too busy telling them what they can't do and start telling them what the Bible says they can do. Uh, y'all, y'all missing this. We're too busy telling them what they're not instead of telling them what they are. And, and many folks know that they're living in sin. You ain't got to remind them what their sin is. You ain't got to remind them of the consequences of sin. Amen. They need help out of their sin. Situation, but we have gotten so traditional in our churches. We want to make the before they can know who Jesus is, they gotta learn the doctrine. Before they can know yeah, how to right. change their life, they gotta know how to sit in the pew with their legs crossed. Yeah. Before they can learn the basic instructions of the Bible, we want to teach them everything else and put them in change. In other words, we don't want you to do what the Bible says, we want you to do what our bylaws say. Wow. Amen, amen. And people are tired of being in chains. People are tired, and what happens, they break the chains. And when they break the chains, they don't go to nobody's church because they have a fear. Matter of fact, I, I learned something. Uh, I got a new puppy, and, and I learned some stuff about this puppy. Because what happens when we're gone or when we're at the house, we leave him in this crate. So now, uh, uh, when it's trying to get him in his crate and you fuss out getting his crate, he don't want to go back in his crate because he doesn't want to be bound. Wow. And what happens is that there's no fun being bound because when I'm bound, I can't be free to express who I am. When I'm bound, I cannot be free to express. How can somebody change if you got him changed up? Oh, they chained him, and instead of trying to help him, they cut him off, and when they got to him, they tried to bind him. And what happened, we have to be careful as a body of believers that we're not abusing people, because chaining people and keeping people in bondage is abuse. And there are so many people keep going back to these same dead churches being abused Sunday after Sunday. They don't, they, what they call it, uh, whatever the syndrome is, you keep going back to your abuser, and what happens is there's no change in their life, they're not being better, they're, 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 they're mistreating people, and one thing I learned about abused people, abused people abuse other people, and the reason they're so mean when they come out to church, because somebody was mean to them first. <laughs> lastly, lastly, if you want to, we want to help people, we want to help people from this fellowship abuse, this fellowship abuse. One, like I said, we can't cut them off. Regardless of their situation, regardless of their sexuality, regardless of what they're dealing with, we cannot cut them off. Mm -hmm. I'd rather him be here with live folk than be hanging with the dead folk that got him in trouble in the first place. Amen, amen. We, but when they get here, we can't bound them. We can't put them in chains. We have to allow them to worship freely. We have to allow them to be themselves. They may not dress like you. They may not wear their hair like you. But who are you to judge and deal with that? Let them be who they are. Listen, listen. How can we say that God created all of us and what he created was good and we're judging what a person looks like? Amen. If, you, if you're worried about what somebody wear, that is abuse. If you're worried about how much makeup they got on, you say something, that is abuse. Anything that tries to, to tr control their thinking and their mindset, that is nothing but abuse. Amen. Lastly, lastly, look, look what they did. And this one, in verse 4, as they broke the shackles, neither could anyone tame him. When you use the word tame, you knew we were talking about an animal. Too many times when people come into the house of God, we're too busy trying to tame people instead of pray for them. Amen. 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 Taming is trying to break. Amen? Mm -hmm. Break the will of something that you're trying to control. Amen. When you tame a wild horse, you have to break it in order for it to conform mm -hmm. the way you want it to conform. When you tame an animal, whether it's a lion at the circus, or an animal at the zoo, you have to break it. Let me, let me explain something to you, the problem with that. Even with a, 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 a dog, in order to break the potty trainer, you have to break it. 
Part of the breaking process is painful and it can be abusive. Because you're not breaking them for them to become better. You're breaking them so they can conform to what you want them to do. Oh, y'all missed that. Too many churches, instead of praying for people and guiding people, they're trying to break people with abusive rituals in order to control the narrative of their life. And what happens is, is that people are tired of being broken. People are tired of being controlled by the church. Because what's happening is, is that when you break something to tame it, the only person that benefits from it is the person that broke it. Oh, y'all missed that. In other words, the horse doesn't benefit, the dogs don't benefit, the people that broke it. And people are saying, why am I being broken at church for you to control me and I'm not getting nothing out from the church? I'm not getting no word from God. I'm not getting any peace. I'm not getting any uh, 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 fellowship. I'm not getting any love because you broke me to the point that you want to control control me, and all you're getting is my time and my money, and I'm not getting Jesus. They try to tame it as churches. We got to stop trying to control people. And people have left the church because the one way to break a person is to bring up their past. Amen. Bring up what they're doing. And many times we try to get, these people are hurting because they said the church was in my business. I went to the church for help. And the only response they got from their spiritual leader, well, you know what? If you go to church for people, then you're not as Christian. Mm -hmm. My thing is, why do we always victimize the victim? Mm -hmm. He was a, This young man was a victim in this circumstance. He didn't ask to be possessed by unclean spirits. He didn't ask for this. Amen? Amen. And you'd be surprised what had happened to people. They didn't ask for their problem. Yeah, don't get me wrong. Everybody made a mistake. Let's be clear. Amen? Amen. Let's be clear. But I can tell you this. No drug addict asked to be addicted. It was a one-time thing. They thought they were going to have some fun. They didn't ask for that. We so quick to judge. Some of our people, they're, 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 they're dealing with their sexuality, whether they're, they're, they're men, women, or whatever. Let me ask you, they didn't ask for that. Amen? They didn't ask for that. And I'm not going to get into, were they born like that? I don't believe that, but here's the thing. We don't know what's going on with them mentally or whatever, but they didn't ask for that. What are we doing as a body of believers, as a fellowship, when people come to us in trouble, when people come to the church to find understanding and peace about their situation? Are we cutting them off? Are we putting them in on the morning bench? Are we trying to chain them and bind them to rules and circumstance? They gotta look this way. Because too many people look the part, but they're not the church. Ah, amen. Amen. Just because you cut your hair and, and wear a nice suit and wear church clothes. That's right. That, that, that's, what tell. that's why I have the issue with the term church hurt. Because people put church on everything. Mm -hmm. Church clothes. Church shoes. <laughs> church music. Y'all see why I got an issue with church hurt? Because that's not of the church. Because the church that's in this Bible is that we're supposed to uplift one another. Amen. Amen. Listen, listen, he was so conflicted in his spirit. The Bible says this. This is what I love about verse 6. When he saw Jesus, he ran and he worshipped him. Even in the midst of what was his troubles, there was something in him. I don't know how many they said legions. It was a bunch of demons. But one of those things inside of him compelled him to worship Jesus. These people, they want to worship God. You see them in Walmart, they want to worship Jesus. They just don't want to deal with no church stuff. Amen? Amen. Amen. They want to worship God. 
And here we have to provide a place where they can worship God. Because here's the thing, until you worship, understand, until he worshiped, he didn't get a healing. Amen. Don't miss that. Before you can get your healing, you have to worship. You have to worship God. Amen. And is it our fault as a body of believers, of fellowship, that people can't get their healing because we haven't provided a safe place for them to worship? Amen. 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 Listen, I'm done. Church fellowship juice is real. If you've been exposed to it, let me tell you something. Find a place. Because not every place is abusive. You don't have to deal with any abuse. You decide. Here's the thing. Don't let anybody tell you, turn another cheek. You go, let me tell you something. When Jesus was talking about turning another cheek and all that, let's, let's put this stuff in real spiritual and biblical context. Pers being persecuted for my faith. What that mean? That means I am worshiping God. And people are challenging me for my faith in Jesus. In other words, they say, you can't worship God. Uh, uh, we're going to kill you. This what's happening in so many countries. People are being killed because of their faith. But I did not come to the church for you to talk about what I did 20 years ago. Amen, amen. I don't have to accept that. We don't have to accept that. I don't have to accept the fact, okay, yeah, you know what? Yeah, my kids got different fathers or, or my kids are doing this. That, that's not your business because that has nothing to do, because my flaws have nothing to do with my faith. Amen. Amen, amen. You, you see what I'm getting? You want with this? So people do not have to be abused. And sometimes I feel some of these people that left the church made a better decision than the folk going every week standing. Ah, amen. <laughs> Because you should not have more peace outside the body of Christ. Come on. Than you do with the body. Amen. You should be more comfortable hanging around dead situations. And the reality, we have to be accountable. Whose fault is that? If we're operating as a church, we're operating as the body of Christ. Like I said, just because the building has the name church on it, they got a picture of Jesus, whether he's white, Hispanic, or black. Does not mean it's the body of believers. So we have to stop this community fellowship abuse. Stop abusing people. Stop trying to control people. I'm going into my decision. Here's the thing. When Jesus died, when Jesus came, there's nowhere in the text but Jesus was trying to put people in chains. Amen. His goal was to set people free with the truth of who he was. Why are we limiting people? Why are we so nasty to people? Why are we mistreating? Does it matter? Does it matter what they do? Because my text says that love covers a multitude of sins. Amen. My Bible says nothing can separate you from the love of God. So if nothing can separate you from the love of Christ, why do I got a problem? Amen. You ain't, you ain't about, your, your sins are not bothering me. Here's the thing. Sin is not contagious. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot choose as certainly for the catch the fruit or catch a cold. That's something that if, if I walk into a situation, I have no choice in that. Amen. Okay. Amen. But here's the thing. You have a choice whether you sin. You don't have to do something just because somebody else is doing it. Amen. Amen. What does their issue, and, and here's the thing, I, and I've never been having an issue, but I'm glad I'm here because I can talk about it more freely. I never had an issue with people's sexuality. That's not my problem. I understand what my word said. I know what I believe. But guess what? Whatever people are going through, that's between them and God. Amen. I can only instruct you what the word of God says and do it in a way where I'm not abusive and I'm not being controlled. Because you can tell people, you can teach people the word of God in a way where you're not controlling them. And here's the thing. Who are you to try to break and tame somebody? Amen. Who's giving you that authority? There's nowhere in the Bible where it's your responsibility or our responsibility to change people. Amen. Our job is to give them Christ. Our job is to give them a safe place to worship God. Amen. That when they come into this place, they see Christ, not us. Amen. Not rolled eyes. Not snarling mouths. Not gossiping tongues. Amen. They should be able to come and say, I come to a safe place. I remember as kids, I don't know 
if y'all used to play tag or hide and go seek. And once everybody was running, anybody could be tagged to be it. I don't know what it is. <laughs> it is it. But the whole purpose, you were safe when you got on base. Y'all remember base? Amen. When you got on base, you didn't get hit. Huh. They couldn't tag you. And the person that was it would be mad because everybody hanging out on base. Amen. <laughs> And you know what? The devil wants to tag you. But you need to get on base, and that's the house of God. Amen. 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 That way, if, if you touch base, I'm, I'm, at, I'm at base, I'm safe. Amen. And we have to create that atmosphere, create that opportunity. And listen, Jesus wants to save you. Jesus wants to be a part of your life. Secondly, maybe you don't have a church home. Listen, we would love for you to partner with us and become a disciple of the Moon Church. God to move. I promise you, this will be a ministry where you can be safe. We're building something great. We're building, let me tell you something, we're trying to build something great, go against the mold of traditional. And, and here's the thing, we're really not trying to change tradition. The goal is to get the church back to its original state. Get the church back to the original way God created the church to be. A place where Amen. Amen. people love each other. So we're not really changing anything. We're just trying to go back to where God created the church to be. Amen. And if you want to be a part of the ministry that's going to save lives, listen, there are so many of you abused folk. There are so, let me tell you something. There are so many people. Let me tell you how serious it is and what I'm learning. There are so many people who suffer from spiritual PTSD. You think I'm playing. Suffering from PTSD. The preachers say, I'm going to the book of Exodus. The first place somebody, all oh, you better thought talking about adultery. That's spiritual PTSD because that's what they're accustomed to. Every time somebody goes ah, to this scripture, I'm going to get attacked. Oh, here comes somebody going to get up in front of me. I know they're going to say something about my situation. Have you ever been to church and felt like that? Mm -hmm. Preacher ain't even got read the text. He ain't even going to the text you think he's going to. Or you go to a text, nobody even know you in the church, and you feel they're talking about you, so now you're mad. That ain't nothing but spiritual PTSD. You know why? Because you've been through it before. When people say I they preach about me because they've been through it before. And we should not, people should not be walking around here with spiritual PTSD. Every time they go to church, they hear a song, they get upset. It reminds them of a traumatic experience. They can't even come to church. Some folks didn't come to church, go to church today. Not because of the coronavirus. Some people didn't go to church today because when they look in the mirror, they didn't think they look good enough to go. Amen, amen. Y'all keep what I'm saying? Come on, I'm done. Come on, let's get down here. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Listen, as we transition to our communion, our communion. Oh, what is the We're going to serve today because it's only a small group. But be mindful that you can serve yourself at home. How many of y'all know? You don't have to be at church to get communion. You don't have to have an ordained preacher to come to your house. You can serve yourself. The Bible said do it as often as you remember me. Amen. We got to get out of this mindset because see, bondage tells us that the only way you can have communion is you got to come to church. Yeah. And wear a white and wear a suit. Communion tells us that you have to be baptized. How many of you know you don't have to be baptized to take communion? Amen. 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 It's reserved for saved believers. But here's the thing, even if a person's not saved, I would never tell nobody they can't take communion. I don't, I don't see how people even have the ball to do that. We would never ask people to leave the, leave the sanctuary if you decide not to take it back. You, don't, you, don't, you shouldn't be asking people to leave. We're so quick to tell folks you need to ask for forgiveness and all this before you take communion. Let me tell you something. What that text means, I want to teach y'all, is that it's not if you live in a city, it's just if you have any malicious intent in your heart. If you're taking it just to be doing it because this is what we do, that's not, that's taking it out of context of what God wants to do, so now you're in the law. But if you take it, but if you take it to remember what Jesus did on Calvary, that's what we're supposed to be thinking about. Because the reality is we all have sin. We all have sin in our heart. Some of us, when we go to church, we look at somebody, we sin it right there for that. Amen. It's almost impossible to ask God for forgiveness of every sin in every five seconds you ask. That's not a reality. And 
and his faith. Praise God that God has done that. Amen. 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 Glad you got that call. I did come. I'm going to come because I did a rich come. boxes to the left or to your right. We ask that you give and God there on the cash app dollar sign got to do it dollar sign got to do it. took the bread with his little disciples. He blessed it, broke it, and said, this is my body that should have broken it for you. Take it and eat all of it. Likewise, he took the cup, said, this is the new covenant of my blood. Drink ye all of it. Father God, Lord, we thank you for your fellowship. We thank you for your time. Thank you, Father. Father, we ask you to continue to cover us, to keep us safe. Yes. Father God, give us common sense that we may be utilize it as we leave this place. Come back to you. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.